Welcome to Massive Beers. My name is Matt. Second part of the beer stuffs we're doing here because we're doing a second part of a series of a series that's called Parts. Um, yes, Rushing Duck, their part series. Here, let's bring them on camera. Why do we have them off? I don't know why. Uh, Barrel H Blends from Rushing Duck Brewing out of Orange County, New York. Um, I got gifted a bunch of these via my friend uh, Ben. Uh, and lo and behold, it is Christmas time, and I wanted to kind of open some barrel aged cheer, and these were kind of burning a hole in the back of my fridge, so I decided, why not? Let's crack them. Um, so, full disclosure, if you haven't watched the previous video, you should go watch that. I filmed it actually on Christmas Eve. Um, it was part two, or sorry, part three and four in this series. There's no part one. So, part three I didn't do, but I had part, um, uh, three, four, and this B5, and this B6. So I figured I'd do a side-by-side, -side, and then a side-by-side, -side, and maybe a Super QV, because I still have some of the bottles in my fridge that is buzzing that I'm not gonna turn off this time, because, <clears throat> yeah, I can't, because I forgot to turn it back on last night, and my beers were kinda not super cold, except for these, which were in the fridge out in the barn. Anyway, um, so we're gonna crack into these. So I have the site up here for Rushing Duck. This is a part series four blended barrel aged beer, part five. Uh, part four is a 12.1% blend of experimental English barley wine, uh, Asian bourbon barrels, Imperial, nope, I'm reading the wrong one. That was four. We're gonna do five and six. God damn it, I suck at this. Um, it's a blend uh, consists of quad and bourbon barrels, approximately one year, uh, dead morose and bourbon barrels, approximately one year, Imperial Nimpomsicle, which I looked that up, by the way, and that is kind of like their imperialized version of like an English shilling ale, um, in bourbon barrels uh, one year, and a 13% barley wine brewed exclusively for aging in bourbon barrels, approximately two years. Uh, up front, this beer tastes like big barley wine with notes of dark chocolate and not too sweet maltiness. In the back, you get a roasty chocolate notes from Den Rose, as well as some fruity esters from the quad, released in January 2017. So that's your number fiver over here. And over here, a number six, we have this batch contains Den Rose Stout from 2015 Heaven Hill, uh, Kentucky Barrels, Quad 2015 from in Heaven Hill Barrels, Quad 2015 Age in Hell Rock, New York uh, Whiskey Barrels, and Rushing Duck Solera Age in Hill Rock Barrels. I wonder what their Solera is. Maybe they explain it right here. Uh, the Solera Barrel consists primarily of Quad with the addition of small amounts of Rudy Juice and Chain of the Dead as an evaporation occurs. So they're basically topping off the Angel Share with uh, Chain of the Dead as a stout, and I don't know what Rudy Juice is. Um, part uh, six is very Belgian quad flavor forward, uh, t uh, tasting of spicy dark fruit and a touch of sweetness, and relatively mellow bourbon flavor, released September 2017. So the last time, the last two we did, that previous batch that we did, um, they were a month apart as far as release goes, but they were both in 2016. These are both from 2017, January over here, September over here. So hopefully that brings everybody up to speed. Bottle openers are a good thing found this my old like bar key that every bartender uses in the universe nice hiss off that one this one wasn't too shabby but i was quite surprised now i'm pretty much a sucker for matching glassware and side by sides you see they're not matching close but no cigar the matching ones that i had um last night broke one not because i drank a lot and i dropped it this morning i came in here and i was doing stuff and i just pulled a cord and the cord lassoed it and broke it so I have more of these, I think, out in my shed, so it's not like I don't have any more. And I gave a whole bunch of them the key, so maybe I don't. I don't know why. So anyway, man, these are cold, by the way. Um, these are out in my barn fridge, um, which, you know, refrigerators tend to be a little bit colder um, in general. Um, but it's also, like, 20 degrees outside so we'll see how this stuff fares apologize for the super coldness now these look very very similar uh if i bring up the camera camera over here you probably notice maybe a little bit of darkness to this one as compared to this one it's very 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 light uh very similar uh, in color very different than what yesterday's part four and part five look like no part three and part four jesus christ no yeah this is part five part three and four man I am the worst at this. I don't know why you guys watch me. So the one was much, much lighter. I ended up liking that one quite a bit. But these are very similar minus 10. You can see this one over here has a nice head going for it. Uh, this one dissipated pretty quickly. So not as big of a hiss over here. So maybe a little bit of lost carbonation. We'll see what's what. Let's get a nose on part five. Oh, 
honestly, it really does smell like a mixture of the two from yesterday. There is this bittering to it that I assume is from a kind of uh, a little bit of uh, extra hopping. Uh, and their English barley wine here, what was it again? It was a quad, uh, dead rose. I don't know. Yeah, it's, this one actually doesn't have a barley wine in it. Oh, no. And then it has a 13% barley wine brewed exclusively for aging. So I assume that one had a decent amount of bittering because of that extra aging. So it's not so much like a, a, a big footy uh, kind of uh, hop aromatic um which is kind of what i referenced yesterday it's a little bit more of just a hopped up kent golding fuggly thing like they kind of mentioned in the second beer here um so yeah i'm uh i'm digging it I'm getting those caramel vibes airing in a sugar daddy soft race and that's very much where i want this beer to kind of be i'm interested in how that goes down it smells absolutely fantastic let's go over here to part six insanely different nose insanely different nose that's crazy how different that is. It's crazy. This is just barley wine to the max over here. Like, that is all really, really barley. And over here, there's just like... It, I would say, like, heavy oak tannin thing going on here. Not super vanilla. It's like almost like a spicy wood. What's that wood? There's this wood... It's a South American wood um, that they use to, they don't necessarily barrel age in it, but they put staves or they kind of drop that in there and it has like kind of cinnamon to it. Kind of like, it's not carbar carbonara, carbonara, some, something with a C, I think. And it kind of has a little bit of those vibes going on. So I think there's a big barrel age kind of component here. They, um, uh, that could be that Solera. Maybe it was, they did a bunch of barrel age stuff and maybe they solera stuff back in a barrel to get a huge barrel component way less perceptionally sweet than over here still sweet but way less definitely leaning into a little bit more of that quaddy stout mixture as far as sweetness vibes as opposed to barley wine but just the juxtaposition the crazy difference again you're doing different blends here they're different beers so you're expecting you know there to be difference with that that big of a difference on there you know you're talking about a 2017 2017 beer you're talking, talking about five years you're talking about big uh beers that are aging barrels that you know, you just kind of assume there's going to be a bunch of moving parts that are very similar in them. Hence the reason for the side-by-side. -side. But just to get this, there's something I'm missing over here. I don't know what it is. It's almost like a like an iced tea vibe. Like a tannic, it, like it's, it's beyond tannic tea. Like it's almost like 4C iced tea kind of vibes to it. Less boozy, less barrel, a little bit more beer, but a lot of wood. When I say barrel, I mean spirit and char, uh, but there's a ton of wood to it. Interesting, very interesting. This is gonna be a really fun one. So, anyway, let's dive into the uh, the fiber. Cheers, y'all. That's really good. That might be my favorite of the three I've had so far. Mm. And I apologize for any audio issues with yesterday's, today's, or even previous ones. I kind of get my audio system dialed up. I kind of don't listen to my reviews at all. I cut based on visuals. Like, you know, I do this whole open and where I go like this. When I'm done, I drink a beer. I really use those as cues to where I cut stuff, and I rarely listen, really listen to them. I listened to last night's before I edited it, while I was editing it. Just to be like, oh, let me check, because I redid my whole setup here and cleaned, and the audio was horrible. I had to work on it. Um, not quite sure where this one's going to land. Uh, hopefully it comes out quite better than yesterday's. That buzzing, like I said, not all that great, but those beers need to be cold. But back to the actual beer itself. This is fantastic. Like I said, probably my favorite out of the three so far. Heavy. Heavy, old school English ale barley wine vibes. We're getting into that 10-year-old old stock. We're getting into that 10-year-old Hardee's. It lacks that little bit of funky yeastiness to kind of get into JW Lee's territory, but you know what I'm trying to say here. Um, and in half the amount of time, that's a great thing about barrel aging. On top of age, you kind of accelerate that process a bit, so you're getting that rich kind of... It's not necessarily raisin any. It's a little bit more pruner, prune, pruner netty. Uh, so almost like a little bit more juicier version of a grape, so that's why I kind of get where those prune vibes kind of come from. But it works works infinitely well. Nice, soft, kind of chocolate vibes on this. That's where I get that raisin that thing kind of uh, from. Um, a decent amount of, of coconut and vanilla on here. So the barrel's playing a lot 
soft little char to it and a really beautiful barley wine each barley wine mouthfeel nice soft carbonation doesn't look that car but there's still some carbonation there could have used a little bit more in perfect 12 yeah but i don't mind where it's sitting at but it's got this nice beautiful aged barley wine that's what i mean like by the aged barley wine you're expecting a little bit less bodied of a beer and it kind of works here yeah i dig it man i absolutely dig it my favorite of the three so far so oh my big old jug of distilled water from yesterday. Cleanse that palate, baby. Mm. Oh, baby. Okay. Off to number six. Really interested. Okay. Now I know why. It is a really big tartness to this. Eh. I should probably pump the brakes on really big. There's a tartness to this. Which makes makes me think this is kind of going a little bit in a negative way. It just has this... Um, I've had Dead Moreau's from them kind of go a little bit tart on me before. Is that what this is? Is that what's actually doing it here? I don't know. I mean, the thing about this is, is they're putting a lot of more aged beers in here. And they're also throwing that Solera in here. So something could just be a little bit, not funky, but really heavily leaning into a fruited thing. Remember, actually, this kind of makes sense now. If we kind of rewind back, if you watched that video from yesterday, I talked about that one beer having like a port element to it. Uh, part three, I believe it was. Um... That's kind of where this one kind of floats around. Um, it floats around in this kind of port barrel kind of thing that is a little bit more vinous, a little bit more grapey, a little bit more tart um, than you'd want it to expect. And that's kind of what I think I was getting in a nose. I just couldn't really pull it off or land the description on it. Yeah, that's my least favorite of the three, of the four. I can see this being very, very tasty in a specific way, a specific mindset. You know, if you label this a port barrel raspberry, because I'm getting this big raspberry thing off of it. Port barrel raspberry, you know, barrel blend, something. I think I view it differently because it's not sour. It's tart. It's fruited tartness. So it's not necessarily negative or turning. But if you frame this differently, you know, coming off all those other ones, even though that previous one, the first one, the third one gave me port vibes. This is way more in that direction. If you frame this differently, if you label this differently, you tell me, oh yeah, this is port barrel aged bourbon, like a, like a blend. It's a barrel aged rye barrel quad, no, no, a port barrel aged stout. Um, and then we put like a little rested on a little bit of raspberry for fruitiness. I'd be like, this is kind of like really where this should be it's kind of like weird how you can frame that sometimes in your own brain through you can talk yourself in this to being a good beer if it was if that's what it was supposed to be but coming off the heels of the other three even though that first one had port vibes this one is much much more prominent much much more aggressive to a point where i don't actually want to do the cootie i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to but I think it's going to overpower everything. So we'll see what's what. We'll get there. But I think this is a really fun side-by-side, -side too. This one is the, the winner for me of the group. Now, we're going to test. I'm going to have to go grab some more glasses. I'm going to have to do, like, a side-by-side-by-side -side -by -side real quick just to give it the full Monty, I guess you would say. And, uh, yeah, I'm just going to go grab that and do that now. But this one, the Port Vibes. Let's talk about these before I run off to that. Port Vibes, Chocolate. Tartness, fruitiness, raspberry vibes done over here. That's fucking delicious. That's barley wine to the max, baby. Give me a sec. Okay. So over here, so again, 
This is part five. The one that I think is my favorite. Part three I thought I was going to like better. But part four is the one I liked out of those group. Out of that group. So let's do this. Let's give these two a pour. Nothing too crazy. I want to save some of these for Keith. Who are supposed to hook up today. I have beers for him because I wanted to give him some of these. So I want to make sure he has some. I'd advertise this thing. These are my favorite. I should buy more of these. I got this as a Christmas gift a year or two ago. It's one of my favorite bottle sealers, although they don't really work on that. Uh, 750s all that much. So, again, just for those playing along at home, that's that lighter color one. We'll go over here on three real quick. Mm. Let me say, I have to pour more to do a... No, I don't have to pour more to do an honest koozie. Just enough to where we can blend them all together. Drinking this off of this... so much nicer. It has those poured vibes with just a little bit lighter. Drinking that from last night. I like that more than I remember. Let's put it that way. Yeah. This one has that sharpness as I was talking about last night, so that's quite fun. Four markedly different beers. While these two share a very similar stretch of DNA, while they do have this kind of aged old ale quad barley wine kind of sugar daddy thing going on, very different. And I kind of dig that, you know, to reproduce the same thing over and over, especially when you're doing these very in depth, complicated blends. I don't think it's all that, all that easy, but all that. Uh, interesting to make it the same thing over and over again. It's that combination, that variance that really makes everything sing here. So what we're going to do, let's push these off camera so we have a little bit of room to go. I'm just going to do the super cubie. Oh, I didn't talk. These, that's how you talk about four or five, five wins. For me, as far as it goes, it, it's close, but this is definitely five. It's definitely a winner. Four, three, six is going to how it goes down for me. So let's, let's actually use this glass because I want to kind of get the same amount of liquid. How's about that? See, I'm going to do the super QB. That's how everything, that's how everything is done. It's called science. So, part three, part four, part five, part six. Let's see what the nose knows. Actually smells quite nice. Um, has a little bit of acetone evaporative, big booziness to it. Something a little bit I didn't really get on the other ones. When you shave at the glass, I didn't really take a big nose off of the second pours. But I dig it. Nice, rich. Kind of it is a mixture of all four of your again, no shit Sherlock. So you'd be surprised how often it doesn't work out that way. So I'm just gonna dive in and see what's what. Cheers, y'all. It is a mixture of all four. But I think they're all better on their own. Even though, you know, number six is probably my least favorite. There's a unique experience to be had there. This this mixture, this cuvee, is a little bit more neutral. Um, sharpens the, uh, it shaves the edges off the things I don't like. Um, the, the three and the six. But it also dudges, dudges, is dudges a word? <laughs> it also shaves the edges, dulls the edges. That's what dudges was supposed to be. It was dulls the edges, dudges um, of, you know, five and four. And then the great things about them, it makes a little bit more kind of monotone. Um, still a great fun mixture. Great, awesome, fun side by side. And again, Ben, thank you very much for making this possible. It's a very fun kind of back and forth to do on these and um yeah just fun to do merry xmas y'all 
It was a very fun uh, Christmas Eve. It was a very fun Christmas day. It was probably, you know, Mike is, you know, uh, a bit over a year and a half old. And uh, while he likes toys, still the ground, you know, the idea of Santa and, and uh, opening presents really is beyond beyond him at this point. I don't know if that's behind or forward or whatever. But, um, uh, you know, the presents, he was like, I don't want to deal with this stuff. I have my toys. And I was like, hey, you open up toys. He's like, oh, there's a toy. Um, so I think next year, when he's pushing three, it should be pretty fantastic. But it was awesome, man. You know, I got to spend time with my family on Christmas Eve. Um, they came down. We had some good food, good laughs. Um, today is more my wife's side of their family. Um, we, yeah. Uh, we get opulent, man. Um, yeah, they, they always like to have a really nice kind of dinner. Um, my, you know, my Oma, uh, my wife's... Oh, I didn't bring my beer mug. Uh, my uh, my wife's uh, grandmother, she got me a, a beer mug with this German saying. Uh, she's off... The, she's like... She came here not to... You know, she came here with my wife's father. Uh, what? Ugh, yeah, my wife's father, like her dad was from Germany. You know what I mean? They came here on a boat from Germany, and she didn't speak a lick of English when she came here. And Inga is her name, and uh, she always gets me some kind of um, cool beer-related thing for for Christmas. And she got me this mug about like oh, you can't drink when you're dead, so drink an hour or something. But it's in German, uh, <laughs> which is awesome. A ceramic stein. I should have brought that. I should use that tonight. Um, but they, she came over. We exchanged presents. Hung out. We had uh, we ate a whole crap ton of filet mignon, which sounds like man, you're balling. No, we have a cow. We had a bunch of cows, so we had meat. That's how you get that stuff. From. So, um, you know, we just made a bunch of medallions and uh, some potatoes and stuff like that, and ate really well. And and then uh, put my kid to bed and was ready for a beer. It was a long day for him too. Um, very stressful. A lot of overstimulation. So put him to bed he crashed out immediately so i figured to come back here do this quick quicker review because i promised myself and i promise y'all and uh ended up being just a fun little little ditty to do and uh yeah i want to say have you had these let's talk about them down there if not let's talk about christmas let's talk about beer let's talk about fun stuff tell me how your christmas was all those fun things it's been a wild ride it's been a great year i appreciate everybody sticking by uh hanging with the channel you know, um, you know, I did probably a third of the reviews um, this year that I normally have done over the past few years. In uh, you know, I still get a ton of comments. I still get a lot of people reaching out. I still get a lot of people watching, which is very, very cool. I know when you stop producing, people tend to be like, eh, but you guys stuck by, and that's pretty cool. So I'm appreciative of that. Appreciative of a lot of things. So. Uh, my best of should come up. I mean, it's got to do it before the end of the year. So this week, you'll see it. It'll probably be a live thing. I probably won't record it. I'll probably just do a live stream of my best beers of the year. It's going to be not as much, not as heavy uh, as years past. And sometimes I've done, like, several categories with, you know, 100, maybe 100 reviews or so, give or take. Um, you know, there's not a wide swath of beers to pick from, but we'll put something together. We'll chat. We'll hang online. We'll do all that fun stuff and go from there. So hopefully you guys enjoyed me doing this two-day kind of side-by-side. -side. Hopefully you enjoyed watching me fumble and bumble over my audio issues and everything in between. Hopefully you had awesome holidays, whether you celebrate. Uh, what's it? Christmas is the first one. That's the first one. Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, all the holidays. I'm sure I'm missing some. Whatever your holiday is, hopefully you had a blast. Um, hopefully you had some good beer. Hopefully uh, you had some good times. I'll see you next time. Cheers, though.